same God. So if somebody had a different religion and did not believe in Judaism's view of God, but they believed in a higher power... If somebody believes in God, then they're in a very, very good place. However, if they start telling you that God has parts, God has limbs, God has intrinsic, I'm choosing my words carefully, intrinsic feelings, emotions, any anthropomorphism of God, that's a big problem. So, oh, they'll tell you, God, we believe in God, he's the one in the sky with a lightning bolt, with a long white beard. So that's a problem, because that is a, creating an idol, a graven image of God. It's always those graven images. You know, the Jews are always trying to get away, to, to make problems with the graven images. Yes, we are. Because that's so antithetical of the truth of Hashem. Hashem is one, absolute oneness. Like we always say, there's two types of monotheism. There's soft core monotheism. Soft core monotheism means like, you know, like in the category of gods, there's only one. Like we're cool with that. So all the Thor, Zoo, like this, that whole mythology, we won't go with that. There's only one God. But then there's me, and there's this wonderful world, there's mountains and polar bears and bumblebees. And Smash Brothers, and it's like, but there's only one God, obviously. So that's soft core monotheism. The Jew is into hard core monotheism. What's hard core monotheism? God is one. There's nothing but God. We're inside God right now. We are the extension of His thoughts. That's hardcore stuff. That's our message to the world. Is the Jew is always telling the entire world. That's what Abraham told the world, and we're still passing his message in a very alive form today. Hashem is one. We're inside Hashem, and Hashem is alive. Hashem is alive. So the first part, Shalai Asanu Ke is those that do not believe in Hashem and the Hashem that we're talking about, the oneness of Hashem. And then, those that are worshipping idols made out of the Adama. It's interesting, when Avram Avinu, when the angels came in the form of nomads, and what's the first thing that he told them? They have to wash their feet. Because there were many people in the Middle East that they would worship the dust. So you have to wash off. Before we can have an encounter, you have to wash off the dust. That's why there's an element of being healthy. A person should be healthy and clean. Clean. Wash off the dust. Wash off the dust. Shaloi sam chalkeinu kahem v'garaleinu kechol amoinam. Hashem... You gave us... Is that glass? It's a nice bottle. <laughs> yeah. It's good to drink out of glass. It's very... It's like a higher level of health consciousness. The plastic leeches all sorts of, you know, funny stuff. Okay, we do our best. But you see good things, you have to point it out. So, thank you, Hashem, that you gave us this portion in you, is that we have clarity of who you are, and we have the merit that our great, 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 great grandfather, Avram Avinu, chose you, and we are imbued with this consciousness already inside of us. A lot of this is found in the Tanya, what's called Av Misuteris, the hidden love that's already inside of us. We just have to reveal that love, it's already inside of you. And then we continue. And we actually do compare. We say, Shehei Mishtachavim Lahevel Varik. For those nations that have not yet understood the truth of a world with Hashem, a world with God, that they bow down to emptiness. Emptiness. Now why is idol worship empty? It's empty. Why? Why is it empty? Who gives them all the power? 
Hashem. And even if a person says, yeah, but if I go to this idol and this idol, and I go to this animal spirit, without getting into some of the spooky stuff, of like what goes on, where do they get the power from? Yeah, Yanka? You say that they're just like looking at like the shell of like, but they're not looking at what's filling it. Like they're not like, there's no substance in within it, but they're like, that's the sur superficial thing, but it's not like actually like what it is. So, Nothing exists in this world without Hashem. That's part of the hardcore monotheistic truth and belief, is that if all there is is God, this is so important, then there's no such thing as evil independent. There are those that want to claim that, you know, the devil? The devil is a part of God that, that like, had a breakaway and splintered off from God, and now there's this like, cosmic power struggle between God and the devil. And God, you know, you gotta like root for God. Like, you know, he's like at the ropes and the devil's gonna get him. So we do not believe in that. Nothing exists. Le sheker ain't a regline. There is sheker in the world, there is falsehood in the world. But all falsehood will have, like Jack is saying, at the core, truth. At the core, there's something that's true there, otherwise it wouldn't be in existence. As soon as you redeem the godly spark inside something false, the falsehood just dissipates like smoke, which we're going to talk about in Rosh Hashanah a lot. That may all the evil of the world like smoke just dissipate. So the problem is that people get lost in the external of it, and they don't see that this is also from Hashem, and that Hashem said, stay away from this thing. Where it gets problematic, though, is people who say, well, can't I, based on what you just said, can't I serve Hashem through the evil things? Because isn't God there also? Okay, I need to make something super clear. Should never be a mistake in understanding. You cannot do that. Don't play games. Really bad people in history took that approach. Well, I'll serve Hashem through the darkness. Because if God is one, isn't He also there? So this is what the Balatanya said, that that is us, sir. That of course God is there, but the God spark is chained up. You can't get it. It's not accessible to you. When Mashiach comes, different things are going to happen. And the God spark will open up. Like Chazal say an interesting thing. They say, what's the name? I don't like to say the name. The notorious P-I-G. What's the name for that in Hebrew? Chazer. Chazer. We call it the Devaracher, interesting also. Literally that thing from the other side. So, Chazir is an interesting word. It means the notorious. But it also means, Chazir means to return. Like Chozer, Chozer B'tshuva. So Chazal say, that in the time of Mashiach, I'll say it for teaching purposes, pig will be, I know, We'll actually go back to being kosher. Oh, I was waiting for that. Oh. <laughs> By the way, the Rambam says, you, you, don't say that I don't want to eat the notorious PIG because it doesn't taste good. Hashem made it good. But you have to know that Hashem doesn't want you to eat that. That's why you don't do it. But when Mashiach comes, you'll be able to access the godly spark inside of it, whatever that means. Whatever that means. So for some people, it just means, oh, finally. But for other people, it means that there was something there that I knew that Hashem was everywhere, but I couldn't access Him there. There's many, many layers of what that means. But for now, you can't, you can't access that. You have to stay away from that. Meaning the way to access God in those ways is to stay far away. Let's take this idea another step. A person says, well, if God is ever, why can't I learn Torah while sitting on the toilet? Excuse my language. Isn't God in the bathroom also? He is. But you're not allowed to access Him there. You can't learn Torah there. It's, so to speak, the godly spark is unaccessible. And therefore, you have to refrain from that space, from learning Torah. And not say, well, if God is here, why can't I also make this place, you know? 
the throne room. We're not into that. By the way, some people have this thing, they say, I'll meet you in the base. You heard that before? I'll meet you in the base. So, one of the great Rosh Yeshivas in Kalal Yisrael used to be very not happy with that, the base. Because the base just means the home. There's a few different types of homes. You mean, either mean, you mean the base medrash? So he would say, be careful, don't say I'll meet you in the base. It could be the base Akisa. I'll meet you in the base, like the base. The base is like a generic, we don't know what you mean, the base. I'll meet you in the base medrash. The base Samedrash. Meet you in the base Samedrash. So there, Hashem is accessible in the bathroom. The way that you connect to Hashem in the bathroom is just going to the bathroom and then getting out. There were certain idol worshiping communities that that was like their thing. The Baal Pa'or, the thing, was about large amount of, excuse me, defecation in front of the Baal as a way of like service. And the Gemara describes that there was one time somebody did such a service. People, it was that nobody had ever served in such a way before. And, and everyone couldn't believe, like, wow. Uh, you, you are the t- high score. Nobody ever did that. So we consider that horrible. Is that the day Chipotle was invented? It could be. It could be it all came together in the same situation. You see, is that for the Jew, we understand that there's certain things that Hashem says, you can, you can access me here, in other places you can't. So Yaakov, what you're saying is that, yes, they're seeing the external, and Hashem gave power to these things. He gave power to these things, but He said, stay far away. Stay very far away. Specifically, what happens is, a person who goes to these powers, God forbid, is called something called klipa, which is the external that is an energy. If somebody goes into klipa, something that he's not allowed to access, klipa is not just a shell, an inanimate thing. A klipa is an energy, which means the klipa draws energy. It wants energy. It wants to get stronger and stronger. So the klipa, when somebody puts themselves into the thing, here's a good example of a klipa. You're not allowed to steal. Somebody steals. So they're getting involved in the klipa. So the klipa, what happens is, oh, you put yourself into this act of klipa, so the energy of the klipa draws from your soul, because you put your soul into it. It starts leeching. You put yourself in a place that you shouldn't have gone to, you start l- being leached by this bad energy. And then the bad energy grows like a monster, just gets more and more power, because you plunged yourself into its dungeon. And in that dungeon, it's grabbing stuff from you. So you want to get out of the dungeon as quickly as possible. But it's appealing, because the way the klipas is that they make themselves look very appealing. Pardon the peel. I mean the pun. They make themselves look very, look very appealing. You have to peel the klipa. You have to peel off the shell. And the idea being, just like a fruit has a shell, if you didn't know any better, would you bite right into a pomegranate? You never saw... You never knew what a you just thought, wow, it's so bright red. It makes itself look like the fruit itself. A banana, just give it a go. You bite right into the banana peel. But you didn't get a tummy ache. The klipa convinces you that it's what it's all about, but really it just makes you sick. That's why it's an interesting thing. Like, you know if you go to the bar and hang out and take those drinks and do that thing and then watch the game and then just like, uh, you're not going to feel good about yourself. You know it's not going to be good. And you're going to disrespect yourself. So why do you do it? The guy's like, I'm never doing this again. I'm never going. Sleeps in, wakes up, hungover. His roommate brings him, I don't know, something or other. A couple Red Bulls or some other, you know, toxic soup. And drink this, dude, you'll be okay. And he's like, an hour too late, how you feeling? I'm getting pretty better. Takes a shower. So you coming out? No, no, I said it wasn't. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> okay, I'm doing it. Oh, why'd you do it? You know, and he's like, I know I'm not gonna feel good about this. I know, why, so why do you do it? Don't sell yourself. It only happened, and you know you felt horrible. It's because the klipas are very attractive. They give this feel like it, 
Like they're offering you something. So those that bow down, and bow down means I'm, you've given over. They bow down to idol worship. That's what happens when a person feels like I'm not in control anymore. I'm not strong enough. That's called hemishtachavim lahevel varik umispalim el el And they doubt the son that will never in the end give them what they're looking for. Even the idol worship, it'll take you so far. Even let's say you got all the things that you wanted. But eventually, it runs out. And what do you have? What do you have? Sometimes you see that people chase all sorts of things in this world. And then they have something that's a sad reality. It's called the midlife crisis. It happens to people usually at 25 nowadays. And they're just like, what is up? Okay, at least for sure 30. They're already thinking like, I'm in some job. What was I chasing? Like, what is it all about? And then comes the Harley Davidson and like the ponytail and like, and then, you know, like, why do you have to do that? I don't have a problem with Harley Davidson's, but like, like why do you? And, and there's often a lot of other things that are associated with this, which is not appropriate to go into the details of. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? So the Avoida Zara will, will always leave a person hungry in the end, like unfulfilled. Vanachnu, but us, thank you, Hashem. This is all the beginning of Malchus. It's making such a distinction between Hemishtachavim Lahevlurik, Vanachnu, those that have chosen the good upright path, that have chosen life, Bachar to Bachayim. They've chosen Torah and mitzvahs. For all of humanity, the seven mitzvahs ben noyach, the seven Noahide laws. Anachnu koirim mishtachavim Hashem, we bow down, umoidim lifnei melech malchei amalochim hakodesh bochum. We bow to the king of all kings. The world bows down to the king, but we bow down to the king of all kings. So what is it really saying, Yaakov? It's saying, yeah, the Avodah can look like kings. They can look like they're like a king. They look like a king. Hollywood people, sports stars, the king. Wasn't Elvis also called the king? He was? The king? And we, we get lost in the trance of going to the king, like, he's my salvation. I told you one time, like, if you ever watched the videos, like when Elvis started to perform and the Beatles and girls were going nuts like ah like pulling out their hair like going crazy like people were fainting like hot solos coming they're like fainting girls like all over the place like are you okay like ah screaming cry <laughs> and like Elvis like doing this thing with his hair like the king like he will be our salvation so fast forward, all these girls crying, fainting, like 15 years later. Okay, what did you get from Elvis? What did he give you for your neshama? What did the Beatles give you for your eternal life? So this world of hem mishtach lahevel varik, eventually you realize it just, it doesn't go anywhere. Vanachno? Koirim u the king of all kings, you Hashem. So the beginning of Malchus is absolute clarity. It's all for you Hashem. And I'm celebrating. On Rosh Hashanah, it's the day that I receive free will to use properly. Hashem, you have spread forth everything. Who's coming to the yeshiva today? Mr. Keating? Is that his last name? How you pronounce it? Brian Keating? Yeah, something like that. A cosmologist, astrophysicist. Somebody who, let's say, understands space extremely well. The nature of space, of science. And he will tell you in absolute certainty that the, the, the space science technology as you push it to the furthest realms, is screaming a beginning. 
is screaming a creator, is screaming that there was something before this world. So you'll ask him all your questions later today. Hashem, you designed it all. And you have a special place in Shemaim, so to speak. It's nothing physical. You can't th- get there in SpaceX or the other one, Virgin Airlines. Yeah? Just co- Galactic. You can't get there in Galactic either. It's Shemaim. It's a place, it's a spiritual, conceptual place which is extremely real, more real than this world. One of the things that people have to always know is that Hashem is spiritual. And Hashem is the reality. We went through Aristotle's logic to get that clear in past Shi'un together. Which means, if God's reality, which is logical reality, is infinite, is spiritual reality, it means that it's more logical spiritual reality than physical reality. The fact that you're here in a physical reality should be actually somewhat of a confusing point to your logic. Because logic would dictate that spirituality is the source material. And therefore you should question, like, so how do we get to this physical world? That's really where the question becomes of interest. It's like the spiritual world, that's logical. The physical world, it's illogical, undeniable, but illogical. The answer to how this world exists is called Kabbalah, Simpson. That takes a couple of years. Now, Shana Gimel, we'll, we'll get involved in that. Ushchinas uzay begave meroimim. And Hashem, you have made this place where we can access you, we can come close to you. Hu elokeinu ein oid Hashem. You're elokeinu, you're ours, we chose you and you chose us. And there's nothing else. There's nothing else that should draw my interest. So we're moving through the Malchias, my friends. We should be zeichet to have it so clear that on Rosh Hashanah, it's the day of my free will. And on that day, the judgment is going to be how do you use your free will? How do you use your free will? We should use our free will wisely to choose the king of all kings and Bezrat Hashem then the representative of the King of all Kings, Melech HaMashiach, David Malch HaMashiach, the great King David, will come once again and return the Kingdom of Hashem to this world with the Beis HaMikdosh. Should come be mehir of Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Shavua Tov, Hebron. We're in Slichas now. Now we're stepping up our game.